see that. And actually, we're going to start with a um, sorry with a bidding problem here. Or let me just rearrange my screen a little bit. Oh, I can't do it. Okay, um, <clears throat> we're going to start with a bidding problem here. And this is a, a problem assuming that you and your partner are playing transfers. So uh, most people play, play transfers in response to an opening one note trump. We'll also play them in this situation here. So West here opened one club. Your partner overcalled one note trump. That shows a balanced hand with 15 to 17 is the latest um, EBU recommendations for it. Um, and South here bid two diamonds, which is a transfer to hearts. So the partner bid hearts. And my question for you, which is coming out in the form of a poll, is what should South bid now? So let me give you a few questions, a few minutes, uh, seconds rather, to think about that. And then I'm going to launch a poll um, don't answer verbally and tell me what South's next bid should be here. Give you a few more seconds before I launch the poll. And here goes the poll. And pick one of those responses. Pass, two no trump, three hearts, three no trump, or four hearts. The majority, 30% uh, have gone for three hearts and four hearts. Uh, you, unfortunately, are wrong. Um, some people went for pass. That's also wrong. One person went for two no trump. That's also not right. And only 20% went for three no trump, which is the correct bid there. So if you play transfers and you got the answer wrong here, you really need to read up on transfers because the correct bid is three no trump here. Um, let's uh, close that uh, screen and I'll just explain why. Um, your partner has shown 15 to 17 points with a balanced hand and a club stopper and you've got 10 points so that should be enough the game. You've got a minimum of 25 points. You want to show that you have exactly five hearts and the way you do that is you transfer to hearts and then you say you have enough points for game with exactly five hearts by rebidding three no trump. Your partner now knows that you have exactly five hearts and will either pass three no trump or on this occasion they will uh, re-bid four hearts because they have an eight card bit with you. So three no trump is the right bid by South here and your partner will put you back into four hearts here. Okay, so I'll, I can see the majority of you have not got that right. A lot of you are playing transfers but obviously you're not quite um, bidding them correctly. If you bid hearts again here, so if it goes two hearts, if you bid four hearts, or three hearts, you're showing a six card suit. And South has only got a five card suit, so that's why you bid three no trumps there. <clears throat> South could also invite game, if they were, say, a point lighter, by bidding two no trump or three hearts. Two no trump with a five card suit, three hearts with a six card suit. Oh, so, yeah. If this was a core bidding, 12 to 14, one no trump. Okay, North has overcalled. So it is not 12 to 14, okay? An overcall of one no trump shows um, 15 to 17, or some people play 16 to 18. It is not 12 to 14. This is Akol I'm talking about, okay? What happens if you don't do play transfers with an intervening one no trump? How do you get to the contract? Right, so uh, the next slide is what, how you would bid it if you're not playing transfers. And that's, this is how you would bid it. You would jump to three hearts. That says to your partner, partner, I've got enough points for game opposite a 15 to 17 one no trump overcall. And I've got exactly five, uh, five hearts. Here your partner has three card support for you. So would 
go to four hearts. If they'd only had a doubleton, they would have gone to three no trumps. So you'd end up in the same contract in either case. All right. Any other questions or comments on that? This hand is actually hey. about defense. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, South could be holding less than 11 <clears throat> points or 10 points. In that case, he will probably just pass, won't he? Yeah, that's right. If South wanted to play in two hearts, okay, then playing transfers, he'd bid two diamonds, partner would bid two hearts and he'd pass, or yeah. he could just pass one no trump. Okay, does that answer your question? But here with 10 points opposite a one no trump overcall, which has 15 to 17, you should be in game. <clears throat> okay, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. All right. So this was, uh, this is actually about um, defense here. And I'd like to look at it now from the point of view of West. And I think a good lead on this hand is the ace of clubs. And when you lead the ace in this situation, it's generally right to only leave the ace if you also have the king. Leading the ace, an unsupported ace, is generally a poor lead. It will often help the Clara, but leading from an ace-king doubleton can be quite attractive. And against a suit contract, when you leave the ace here, you're really looking at a signal from your partner as to whether you should carry on in that suit. So you leave the ace of clubs, down comes dummy. You can see that North did indeed have 15 to 17 points with a club stopper. You leave the ace, and what you are looking for is to see what your partner plays. Now, suppose your partner plays the nine and Declara plays the five. That nine looks like a high-ish card, doesn't it? And that should be a signal to you that your partner, for some reason, wants to encourage you to carry on in that suit. Why do you think they might be encouraging you in the, with the Nine of Clubs? They could be trumping. Probably doesn't have any. They could have only two cards. Yeah, I think there were two answers there that, that are possible. One is it could be your partner's only club. It might be a singleton. Or well, yes. the other possibility is if it's a double turn. Now, if you think about it, you started off with six clubs. There were three in dummy, that's nine. If your partner had two, then Declara also started with two. Okay. However, by leading the ace of clubs, we are in danger of um, setting up the queen for Declara. Imagine we play the ace and then follow up with the king. Now my partner plays a three, so we know they were definitely encouraging, and Declara plays the seven. Now if you're counting, that's eight clubs have gone, two rounds, and that means that East has no clubs and South has no clubs. However, a good play here is to play another club, because mm -hmm. you want to stop the queen of clubs from making a trick. Your player set up the queen, but if you now follow with the third round, your partner will rough. And even if that gets over roughed, at least the queen won't make um, a trick now. Okay. Now, if we have a look at this from Declara's point of view, Declara will probably uh, start by drawing trumps here. He draws all the trumps. But eventually, he's probably going to lose two tricks. He's going to lose... Um, uh, to the king of spades, he might try the spade finesse. And if your partner gets in and leads back a diamond, he may try the diamond finesse. And again, you can defeat that by taking those two tricks there. Okay, so you made your two clubs and you got two other tricks. And the important thing was not to let the, you, you prevented the queen of clubs from making a trick, which could have been a valuable, uh, valuable trick there. Any comments or questions on that? Do interrupt me. Let's have a look at um, another one where, again, the bidding was the same. This time you led the ace of clubs. And this time, however, your partner played the three. 
what do you think that three is? Do you think that's high to encourage or low to discourage? Low, low to discourage. Yeah, your, your partner has nothing to encourage you with here, okay? And what we know is that unless that happens to be a singleton three of clubs, um, it, it's your partner is not encouraging you for, for some reason. And in that situation, it could be quite dangerous to carry on with clubs. If I bring up the four hands, you can actually see on a layout like this, especially as you see Declara played the nine, that might be a clue to you that maybe Declara doesn't have many clubs left. And if the layout is something like this, and Declara started with, a, with one club there, can you see that it's quite dangerous to carry on with clubs? If you try to catch the king now, Declara will be able to rough it, and you'll have set up the queen of clubs for them to take later. So yeah. it's so important on a hand like this for you to be looking for your partner's signal and for your partner to be signaling. Here, your partner started, if we go back here, your partner started with just three low clubs and so has nothing to encourage you with. So you need to be wary of that, um, that they're not encouraging you. And your best bet is, after winning the ace of clubs, to play another suit. When I'm playing with someone for the first time, I often look to see on a hand like this whether East is going to give me an accurate signal, whether they want to encourage or discourage. I'm sorry to say that in most, most players who play in these gentle duplicate games do not signal. They either forget to signal or they don't know how to signal. Um, and, you know, it's a minority of people who, who give accurate signals to their partner. So if you can give accurate signals to your partner that they can trust, then uh, I hope that will improve your game. Okay. Tony, can I ask one question? Go ahead. Is there a, a line, uh, dividing line, which cards are high and which are low? Or it is just no. your... Huh? The answer is no. Um, no. I mean, obviously, in this case, when they play the three, you can tell that is their lowest card because the only card lower than the three is the two, and that's already been played. Um, so, obviously, it tends to be that low cards, like the two, three, and four, are low, um, and higher cards like the seven, eight, or nine tend to be high. But it's not guaranteed um, that that's the case. One other thing I, I want to mention is that when you're playing online um, or playing face to face, if we ever get back to that, when your partner plays, you may need a few um, seconds to try and work out whether the card they played is high or low. And if the play has already gone on to the next trick, if you're playing on BBO, you can actually still look at the play to the previous card. Um, and the same on Real Bridge. So <clears throat> um, on BBO, uh, if you've played to one trick, for example, and want to see the play to the previous trick, you click here where this I've highlighted this yellow box. You click here on the trick, and it will bring up a display like this showing you the previous trick. So if, if that has gone from the display and you want to see it, you click on this little number here which shows the number of tricks, and that will bring up this display which shows you what happened. And similarly on Real Bridge, there's a little button here called Last Trick, and it says you click on that to view the last trick. This button is only enabled if you haven't played to this trick. That is to say, until you've played to the next trick, you can see the previous trick. It will bring up and show you what happened. And you will often need that when you're trying to work out, did my partner signal high or did they signal low? Okay. So remember those two things on BBO. Um, uh, you click on that uh, number there and it brings up this display. Or on Real Bridge, you click on the last trick button. Do interrupt me if you have any questions on that. So um, let's have a look at another one. And this time I'm going to uh, launch a poll in a, a moment. The bidding has been very similar here. And you leave the uh, ace. 
the two is played from dummy, your partner plays the five, and declarer plays the seven. And my question to you, which is going to come out in the form of another poll in a moment, is can you tell whether your partner's five is high or low? Can you tell whether it's encouraging or discouraging? Take a moment, think about this, and in about 15 seconds, I'll launch a poll on this. So don't answer verbally. See if you can tell me whether you think the five is high or low. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's try this poll. Do you think the five of clubs is encouraging or not? Is it encouraging, discouraging, or can't you tell? Is a middle one, I think. What did you say? It looks like a middle, middle of three. Right, just answer and then I'll go through the answers with you. Okay, East hasn't got any more. There's a three somewhere. Four, so five. Don't, don't, don't talk about it yet. Just okay. give me your answer and then we'll go through the answers. Okay, nearly uh, over 91% have um, voted, and uh, it's a very even result. 45% said it's encouraging, 41% said it's discouraging, and 14% can't tell. Well, let's see if we can work it out. And the clue to working out whether the five is high or low is to try to work out whether there, there are any clubs lower than the card your partner played that are unaccounted for. In other words, your partner played the five here, and is it possible that he had another card lower than the five? Yeah, yes. What, which card is it, if it is, if he has three. it? Three. It's a three. three. Now, if, so it's possible that your partner had the five and the three and was actually encouraging. Now, you can't know that 100% because another possibility is that Declara had the three and did not play it. That would be known uh, as what's called a false card because Declara, normally, you know, 99% of Declaras will just play their lowest card all the time. So if they had the seven and the three, they would have played the three. If they had the seven and the three and they played the seven, they could do that, and they're trying to confuse you. But 95% of the time, depending on the declarer, most declarers do not bother to do this or do not know about doing this. So when the five is played and the three is not, it makes it quite possible that your partner had the five and the three and was actually encouraging. So if we bring up the four hands, you can see that the layout could easily be something like this. Your partner had the five, was encouraging. So if you treat that as an encouraging signal, you will could lead the king and again play another club for your partner to rough. And even though declare again can over rough this, it prevents the queen of clubs from making a trick there. Okay, so uh, again, Declarer here is going to likely to lose two tricks here because uh, they're going to try the finesse in spades and in diamonds and they'll probably lose two tricks on that one. So I hope that goes somewhere to answer the question I was asked earlier. How can you tell whether your partner's card is high or low? What you have to do is look at the cards that haven't been played yet, the ones that are unaccounted for, and try and work out whether the card your partner played is their lowest card or whether it might be a higher card. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Here we're in a four heart contract. Uh, it's just got one heart, four hearts. You lead the ace of clubs. And again, you're really looking for a signal from your partner. Now, your partner here plays the three. Is that high or low? No. No. 
That's easy to tell, isn't it? Because the two is there, the three has to be your partner's lowest card. And what does that mean? Well, that means that they have nothing to encourage you with. In particular, I think it means they don't have a doubleton. If they'd had a doubleton, they should have played high to encourage because they might have been able to get her up. They probably have three cards in that suit, and the layout could easily be something like this. And I hope you can see that on this hand, if you take the ace and then carry on with another club, you are giving Declare a trick with their, with their queen, of, um, queen of clubs there, aren't you? So, uh, sorry, it's just got a little bit of noise. I'm just going to mute everyone. So unmute yourselves, but keep the volume down if you wish to speak. So here, it's a very good idea not to carry on with the um, with a, with another club there. Okay. In fact, if I um, sorry, I just changed the screen size a bit to so I can see all the buttons. If I um, uh, bring up this GIB button. It is telling me that if I carry on with a club, Declarer can make the contract. But on any other lead, Declarer should be defeated by one trick there. So I would switch to another suit once I get that discouraging signal from my partner. Does that make sense? It doesn't really matter what you play. I might well play a spade here. And now your partner can win the king of spades, unless Declare played the ace. And what should East play back now? A uh, uh, club? Yeah, a club. Yeah. Your partner led the ace, and then when you discouraged, they stopped. And if your partner had very good clubs themselves. If they'd had the ace, king, queen of clubs, they would have carried on with that suit regardless of your signal. But when they switch to another suit, it probably means they have a holding like this, which is a bit uncertain. And while it's very bad for them to lead a club, it's absolutely fine for you to lead a club um, because you will trap any honors that Declarer has here. So if I switch to a club, the 10 of clubs here, now, uh, the Queen of Clubs is not going to make a trick. I can play another one, and the defense will make those four tricks there, three clubs and one spade. Declarer will make the rest of these tricks, nothing we can do about that, but we'll have defeated them by switching to another suit. So, so important when you lead in this situation that you're watching for what your partner signals and that your partner is thinking about what to signal as well. Okay, let's try um, another one. We here open, uh, again it's one heart, four hearts. We start off with the ace of clubs and your partner plays the six. Can you tell what that six is? Do you think that's high or low or can't you tell? Encouraging. High. It, it's probably high and the logic behind that is that there's one card lower than the six that's unaccounted for. What is it? Three. It's the three. Yeah. No one has played the three, so your partner could have been encouraging with the, uh, with the six there. So if we uh, bring up the four hands, what we can see is that they were encouraging with the six. We carry on with the king. And now, again, we can, um, we've set up the queen for uh, Declarer, but if we play another club, your partner will rough it, and Declarer doesn't make a trick now with their queen of clubs. So you're able to take the first three tricks because your partner gave an encouraging signal. It was a little hard to interpret, but if you interpret it correctly, you'll realize that uh, your partner was encouraging, and now you'll make three tricks. You're also going to make one spade here, so again, you will defeat the contract. Um, what about this one? We, we play the uh, ace of clubs, and my partner plays the six, and again, we should think about whether that was 
encouraging or discouraging? What do you think it was? Encouraging. Yeah, encouraging. Why? Because there's a card lower than the six that's unaccounted five. for. It's a five. So maybe your partner was encouraging. So if you carry on with the king, they now play the five. So you now um, know they were encouraging. You play another card here, and this time they win it with the queen. So if we bring up the four hands, you'll see that on this hand, if we rewind it, your partner is right to encourage here because they've got the uh, they've got the queen. So. There are really only two times when you should be encouraging here in a suit contract when your partner leads the ace. One is if you're about to rough, if you, you, you should signal on the assumption that your partner's got the ace and the king, but maybe not the queen. Uh, and you would signal high low if you had a doubleton, or also it's right to signal high if you started with the queen there. In other words, you want to take your um, three tricks. You've got three tricks coming and you encourage your partner so you can take those three tricks. Do interrupt me if you have any comments or questions. And then finally, I've got another one. I've got finally, I've got a poll, the last poll for you on this one. And this is a problem for East. Um, it's got one heart, four hearts again. Your partner's led the ace of clubs. And my question, which I'm going to launch a poll on in a moment, is which club should you play? The jack, the ten, or the five. So I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. And here comes the last poll. What should East play? The jack, the ten, or the five? Okay, let me uh, end the polling there. We're over just over 90%. And I'm going to share the results with you. Most of you here have gone for the five of clubs, 64%, with 27% going for the 10 of clubs and 9% going for the jack of clubs. And um, the correct answer is the five of clubs. You should not be encouraging by playing the jack or the ten in this situation. The only times, if I bring up the four hands, the only time you should be encouraging here when your partner leads the ace against a suit contract is if you have the queen or you have a doubleton. In any other situation, you should not be encouraging because um, you know if your partner's got the ace, king, queen, they will play them anyway. They'll take three tricks, but you should discourage here by playing the five. Your partner will work out that that is your uh, lowest card. And can you see that they should switch to another suit? Again, leading a club will give a trick to a declarer with the queen. So they should switch to another suit. Maybe they'll pick a spade again. East can get in. And now East, having got in, should definitely be thinking about switching back to uh, yeah. your your partner's first suit. So leave the jack of clubs okay. and it traps the queen there and now declarer doesn't get to make a trick with the queen and the defence will take four tricks there to defeat the contract. So although it's sort of tempting to say I've got quite good clubs, they're not good enough in a suit contract for your partner to carry on in that suit. Okay. Any comments or questions on any of that? So that, if you like, was a fairly narrow topic of how to signal when your partner leads the ace against a suit contract. And you really only should signal encouragement with the doubleton or if you have the queen. Those are really the only two times. And your partner needs to be looking out for that signal. Leading, leading the ace in this situation against a suit contract is a, a very good choice very often because 
if you can trust your partner's signal, you'll know, you know, maybe you'll be able to play two clubs and give them a rough or, or, you, or you'll switch to another suit. But as long as you're, you and your partner are uh, looking for signals, that can be a very good lead. Um, so that's it for the topic today. Um, we'll end the lesson shortly. Um, if you want to um, stay uh, on, the, if, if you need a partner, do stay on the call and I'm just going to